Good evening, everyone. Welcome to National Startup Bootcamp 1.0. Before wasting much more time, I would like to invite Professor Ajit Banerjee, Director, JLM Business School, Kolkata, to start the session. Sir, please. Thank you very much. Hello, friends. Welcome to this transformational venture. Today's topic is strategy framework for startups and MSMEs. The learning objectives are two-folded. Number one, to understand the strategic planning tools and techniques for small businesses. And number two, to understand the integration of strategy framework in business model innovations. After attending this session, I hope that you shall be able to apply the basic strategy models to analyze your business and to make a growth plan. There are some suggested readings for you. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah. Uh, management literature suggests various strategic management tools for the companies. Most of these tools are meant for the big organizations. However, I suggest you to follow a few tools and techniques which are equally important for the startups and small businesses. Here is a list of the tools. Serial number one to six are the strategic analysis techniques and serial seven to nine are uh, strategic planning tools which you can apply for your business. One is SWOT analysis, two is OKR framework analysis, three is Pareto analysis, next benchmarking, fifth is market segment competition analysis, six is Porter's five force analysis, seven is Kaizen, eight is generic strategy, and nine is blue ocean strategy, which we are going to explain in our discussion. Next, please. We are starting from the SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis, or uh, it's commonly known as the SWOT matrix, is a high-level model which is used at the beginning of an organization strategic planning. <clears throat> it is an acronym of strength, weakness, opportunities and threats. Strengths and weaknesses are considered the internal factors, whereas opportunities and threats are considered the external factors. Using a SWOT analysis would help you to identify where you are doing well and in what areas you can improve keeping in view the opportunities and threats. We are giving here an example of SWOT analysis. You can create this matrix by identifying your internal strengths and weaknesses and also the external opportunities and threats. Next, please. The OKR framework analysis is one of the most straightforward strategic planning tools. Google, Intel, Twitter, LinkedIn, and many other successful Silicon Valley startups use this simple strategic planning model. It's designed to create alignment and engagement around measurable goals by clearing by clearly defining the objectives and the key results the objectives are what you want to achieve those you select any three or five objectives which are brief inspiring and time bound 
the key results are how you will measure progress towards your achievements. Again, you said three to five key results. They must be quantitative in form for each of the objective. This model is effective in part because of its simplicity. The bigger companies also employ a reverse hierarchy that works to gain buy-in and alignment from the ground up. They begin by setting objectives and key results at the ground level and then flow upward through the management levels or hierarchy. This OKR framework is very effective because goals are continually set, tracked, and re-evaluated. So organization can quickly adapt whenever it is needed. This is a first phase iterative approach that flips the traditional top-down strategic models. You can design your OKR by using this matrix suggested here, where on the left-hand side of this matrix, you can put your, you can set your objectives, three or five, and for each of the objective, you set three or five key results. Next, please. Pareto analysis is very important. This Pareto analysis uh, is known as, the principle is known as 80-20 rule. It says that 20% of the input produces 80% of the output. You can apply this principle in a wide variety of strategic analysis. I'm giving you some examples for your easy understanding. The most common applications is that 20% of a business produce 80% of the profits. You see that your company is making money. But are all the products equally profitable for you? As per this Pareto analysis, only 20% of a business activities or products produce 80% of the profits. Other applications can also add significant value. Wired Magazine suggests that Customers may attribute 80% of the value of a product to 20% of its features. This suggests that most customers of Microsoft Office programs use only 20% of the product's features. And so, they're increasingly turning to less fully features of his solutions, such as Google Documents. These offer fewer features, but other advantages. Of course, this 80-20 is just a figure of speech. The numbers could be anything. They don't even need to add up to 100%, and neither are they limited by 100%? So it could be that 15% of the products produce 110% of the profits. In this example, it follows that the remaining 85% of the products contribute a 10% loss. <clears throat> this brings the combined profit back to 100%. Pareto analysis involves identifying and attributing the value created, that is the outputs, to the inputs. 
a good pareto analysis relies on a cost accounting system such as activity based costing system for the data in order to achieve these attributions pareto analysis can help you even uh, it's not only for the big organizations it's also helpful for the small firms making decisions about what and where to apply resources and your focus it is particularly useful in identifying the loss leaders this may then be exited if they have low strategic value or remediated if they have greater strategic value next please comparing your own business to a rival is essential when competing without it you own you you would never know <clears throat> how successful your performance is in the market or whether you perform one or another task better than your competitor does there are different types of benchmarking that you can use these are three major types one is strategic benchmarking that is used to identify the best way to compete in the market during the process the companies identify the winning strategies usually outside their own industry that successful companies use and apply them to their own strategic process it is also common to compare the strategic goals in order to spot the new strategic choices second type is performance benchmarking it is concerned with comparing your company's product and services this tool mainly focuses on product and service quality features price speed reliability design and customer satisfaction but it can measure anything that has the measurable matrices including processes performance benchmarking determines how strong your products and services are in compared to your competitor firm the third type is the process benchmarking it requires to look at other companies that engage in similar activity and to identify the best practices that can be applied to your own processes in order to improve the process benchmarking is a separate type of benchmarking but it is usually derives from the performance benchmarking this is because companies first identify the weak competing points of their products or services and then focus on the key processes to eliminate those weaknesses for example an organization organization using performance comparison identifies that <clears throat> their product x is superior in features manufacturing quality and design but price uh, is better than competitors product y then the company determines which process add the most to the cost of the product and seek how how to improve them 
by looking at similar by less cost heavy processes in other companies in addition to that there are four approaches or the four ways <clears throat> you can do benchmarking it is important to choose the optimal way because it reduces the cost of the activity and improves the chances to find the best standards either from internally if it is a big organization or the most efficient competitors you can rely upon there are two types of major two types of benchmarking internal and external the internal benchmarking is done basically in the big organizations where there are different uh, locational presence uh, uh, various organ or uh, uh, divisions are there they are but for the small organizations you can apply the external benchmarking uh, we have given here uh, um, how to how to how to develop that uh, um, uh, benchmarking this red is the computer company and blue is your own company you set your strategic benchmarking process benchmarking and performance benchmarking parameters different parameters and you set your own measurement scale it can be uh, one to five scale it can be seven point scale or just low medium high for the sake of simplicity we have shown here low medium high where your company is uh, given by the, the blue dots and your computer's company is shown in the red dots so by comparing these two companies you will be able to understand where these improvements are necessary next please uh, market segment competition analysis is a very useful tool where you will understand in which market segment you should give more stress or less stress now in this matrix we are dividing our market segment in two ways as per the demand and the competition where the competition is low and the demand is high that is the ideal condition which is also termed as the blue ocean so that is the ideal condition for your organization but the other two areas where the competition is low but the demand is medium you should explore the market but where both are low less explore for the time being and keep that market for the future next is the medium competition where uh, the demand is high that creates an opportunity for you so you should give more emphasis on that market and you should also explore where the competition is medium demand is medium competition is medium and demand is low when the competition is very high but the demand is medium and low you should avoid those market segments but you should explore where the demand is high and competition is also high demand is high means that 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 may create some kind of opportunity for your organization so understanding the market segments and the competition level of competition is very important in this context next please porter's five fours is very old strategy execution framework it was created by <clears throat> michael porter long back in 1979 it built around the forces 
that impact the profitability of an industry on a market. The five forces it examines are number one, the threat of entry. Could other companies enter the marketplace easily? Or are there numerous entry barriers they would have to overcome? Second force is the threat of substitute products or services. Can buyers easily replace your product with another? The third aspect, third force is the bargaining power of customers. Could individual buyers put pressure on your organization to say lowering the cost? It happens. In case you are supplying product to a single customer like Indian Railway or any particular automobile company where you have only one customer uh, to sell your product. In that case, your customer is in a better position to bargain. The fourth uh, force is the bargaining power of suppliers. Could large retailer put pressure on your organization to drive down the cost? It also happens in case the supplier enjoys some kind of monopoly in his business. So that, that gives kind of increases kind of bargaining power of the suppliers. And the fifth force is the competitive rivalry amongst the existing firms. Are your current competitors posed for major growth? <clears throat> if one launches a new product or files a new patent, could that impact your company? So these are the five forces and the amount of pressure on each of these five forces help you to determine how future events will impact the future of your business. Next, please. Next, please. Slide 10. Earlier slide, please. Yes. Yeah. Kaizen is taken from the two Japanese words. Kai, that means change. And Zen, that means good. Kaizen is a Japanese term meaning change for the better or a continuous improvement. This Japanese business philosophy regarding the processes that continuously improve operations and involve all employees, the team members. Kaizen sees improvement in productivity as a gradual and methodical process. Its roots stem from US wet time engineering, where necessity demanded quick and implementable improvements as operational pressures and changing demands did not allow for large radical changes. It since developed into a management philosophy for constant improvement in an unending pursuit of for perfection. 
the foundation of any kaizen method consists of five elements team personal discipline improved moral quality circles and suggestions for the improvement there are also four types of kaizen you have to find the right tool for your organization type 1 is kaizen teian which is a bottom of improvement kaizen teian describes a form of improvement where people participate to improve their own process second type is kaizen events that for the defined improvements third type is kai kaku which are radical change and fourth type is kakushin which is breakthrough innovation there are also three pillars of kaizen although the kaizen approach can take many forms but these three pillars can help you to implement this one is the kemba japanese for workplace focuses on ensuring you and your team have the right tools to work effectively and without any clutter muda japanese for waste in focus on waste elimination we target rework delays process bottlenecks double handling and more and the third pillar is standardized change plan do check act and take quick measure mind that any iterative sprint drive change very fast this is the kaizen cycle for continuous improvement shown in this slide next please Porter's generic strategy is very effective even for the small organizations. Let me explain this with with the help of an example. Which do you prefer when you fly? A cheap flight, no frills airlines, or a more expensive? operator with fantastic service levels and maximum comfort and would you ever consider a small company with just a few routes the choice is up to you of course but the point we are making here is that when you come to book a flight there are some very different options available why is this so the answer is that each of these airlines has chosen a different way of achieving competitive advantage in a crowded marketplace in this slide we will look at three approaches described by michael porter the no frills operator have opted to cut cost to a minimum level and first their savings on to customers in lowering their prices this helps them grab market share and ensure their planes are as full as possible further driving down the cost on the other hand 
the luxury airlines focus their efforts on making their services as wonderful as possible and the high prices they can command as a result make up for their higher cost meanwhile smaller airlines try to make the most of their detailed knowledge of just a few routes to provide better or cheaper services than their larger international rivals these three approaches are examples of generic strategies because they can be applied to products or services in all industries and to organizations of all sizes they were first set out by michael potter in 1985 in his path breaking book competitive advantage creating and sustaining superior performance potter called the generic strategies cost leadership no frills differentiation creating uniquely desirable products and services and focus offering a specialized service in a niche market he then subdivided the focus strategies into two parts cost focus and differentiation focus cost leadership is about minimizing the cost to the organization of delivering products and services differentiation involves making your products or services different from the more attractive than those of your competitors the term cost focus and differentiation focus can be a little confusing for you as they could be interpreted as meaning a focus on cost or a focus on differentiation remember that cost focus means emphasizing cost minimization within a focused market and differentiation focus means pursuing strategic differentiation within a focused market so the niche market or focused market is very important in this context generic strategies apply also to not for profit organizations that means the any not for profit organizations a not for profit organization can can use this cost leadership strategy to minimize the cost of getting donations and achieving more for its income while one pursuing a differentiation strategy will be committed to the very best outcomes even if the volume of work it does as a result is smaller local charities are great examples of organizations using the focus strategies to get donations and contribute to their own communities it may be a small community next please blue ocean strategy is a strategic planning model that emerged in book by the same name in 2005 the book titled blue ocean strategy how to create 
uncontested market space and make competition irrelevant was written by Chan Kim, W. Chan Kim, a professor at the European Institute of Business Administration at INSEAD. The idea behind this blue ocean strategy is for the organizations to develop in uncontested marketplace. For example, a blue ocean instead of a market which is very much saturated or developed as for example a red ocean if your organization is able to create a blue ocean it can mean a massive value boost for your company for its buyers and also its employees here we have given a difference between red ocean strategy and blue ocean strategy red ocean strategy is the strategy where the competition level is very high the first point is <coughs> compete in the existing market space where in the blue ocean strategy create uncontested market space in the red ocean strategy the principle is bid the competition but in the blue ocean strategy the principle is make the competition irrelevant so you can easily push your product in the market where the competition is practically nil so you create that market through innovation through research and development explore the existing demand is the principle for red ocean strategy whereas in blue ocean strategy it is create and capture the new demand for example apple apple iphone so any back product was a classic example of this in red ocean strategy make the value cost trade off whereas in blue ocean strategy it is break the value cost trade off so it's not making it's breaking in the red ocean strategy the principle is align the whole system of the firm's activities with its strategic choice of differentiation of or the low cost as we have understood from this potter's model but here in the blue ocean strategy it is aligning the whole system of a firm's activities in pursuit of differentiation and the low cost so that's the difference next please based on these strategic management tools and techniques we have discussed in earlier slides now it's our job to rebuild our business strategy model now this model we many times we have discussed in our earlier sessions that the time has come to rethink and reinvent our business model now it's not possible to invent or reinvent any business model without first identifying a clear customer value proposition often it starts as a quick sorry a quite simple realization imagine for a moment that you are standing on a mumbai road on any rainy day you notice the large number of motorcycles sneaking in and out around the curves as you look more closely you will see that most bear 
whole families, both parents and children, your first thought might be, that's crazy, or that's the way it is in any developing country. People get by as best they can. But when Ratan Tata of Tata Group looked out over this scene, he saw a critical job to be done, providing a safer alternative for scooter families. He understood that the cheapest car available in India cost maybe four times or five times more than the cost of a scooter or two-wheeler, which many of these families, middle-class families, could not afford. Offering an affordable, safer, all weather alternative for the scooter families was a powerful value proposition. One with the potential to reach tens of millions of people who were not yet part of the car buying market. Ratan Tata also recognized that Tata Motors business model could not be used, the traditional business model could not be used to develop such a product at the needed price point. Key resources like technology, key processes like design, and the profit formula become critical to develop any CBB based business model which focuses on three major aspects. One is the target customers, second is jobs to be done, that is identifying the customer's need, and the third one is the offering itself. That means bringing customers satisfaction. Now, this nano project is a classical example of reinventing the business strategy model, which we can easily replicate in our own small business by understanding different strategic management tools, techniques, and also with, with the help of some management knowledge. Next, please. <clears throat> I would like to close my end my today's presentation with the famous quotation of Michael Porter, the essence of strategy is choosing what not to do. It's very important we talk about what to do, but we have to understand what not to do to protect our company in this very critical time and what not to do so that we can proceed further, we can make the developments, we can make the growth very smoothly. So that is my request to all of the participants that please follow the rules and the strategy formulation plans that we are suggesting you through this series of presentations and lectures, and you select 
what you should avoid the practice that you are doing whether that is right for your organization or not and what next you have to do by choosing the right strategy and by selecting the activities what not to do when you are selecting the activity not to do that means you are easily that makes you capable to reduce your cost which can enhance your market competitiveness so that's all for today's session